Hi, I'm Barb with KCCTV, and today I'm in studio with a really wonderful new group that is formed locally, and actually Cross River as well, I think, it's, which is something really important to keep in mind uh, when two communities come together for the betterment of all. This is, this is how it works. So I'm in the studio with a handful of representatives from the International Falls Autism Support Group. And next to me here I have Lindsay Strickland. I have Alex Egan. Is it Egan? Egan. Egan. Okay, Alex Egan, uh, Jennifer Hill, and Sharon Koscheck. And Sharon is really my connection to this group. She invited me via the Facebook um, group invite and I became aware, and you and I have communicated a little bit on some other things, um, but I thought the timing was perfect. Really, you're really starting to gain traction. We are. You're starting to um, get picked up a little bit in the news, and there's, there's no time better than right now to really start having this conversation. So thank all of you for being with, with us. And you live in the Fort Francis community. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's a really great um, balance to have here as we move into conversation. I think the first uh, question that I have is, um, what made you decide to come together and to really form something that's considered a, a regular group that meets regularly? Well, the start of it happened um, shortly after my son got diagnosed. Okay. Um, we were driving in the car one day and he said, Mom, am I the only one with autism? Wow. The only child. And I thought, if this is how he feels, how many other kids feel that way? Um, you couple that with the fact that um, he hasn't really been invited to birthday parties. And I, up until that point, I didn't realize that he missed that. Okay. You know, they, they, autistic kids tend to appear like they don't want that because they tend to seek out quiet or alone space. But in reality, he was missing the friendships. Um, and at the same time, I was going through the transition of starting the IEPs at school and getting him um, into the programs, and I felt lost, completely wow. lost and alone. I had no one to talk to that understood what I was going through. So you were talking with teachers, perhaps, and providers, but not necessarily those who had lived the experience on your side of that process. <laughs> so okay. I just said, this is a must. So I thought I'd put it out there and I'd see if there was any, um, you know, takers. And yep. um, so I posted on Facebook and immediately I had response. Yeah. Um, a simple post of Alex met this wonderful new doctor and immediately I got five messages from people saying, which doctor? Wow. What does he do? Where is he at? How do I reach him? And I thought, <clears throat> you know, there's communication that isn't happening with these parents. And... Um, so we set it up, and lo and behold, these wonderful ladies came, and it's changed a lot for our world and Alex's world. About how long ago would you say that this, you know, you put that message out to the universe to have this? Just like the beginning of November. Wow. Yeah. That blows my mind. It's <laughs> that fast. You realize that we think how hard it is to get things done? Yes. Mm -hmm. but, but here's the motivation, right? There's something really, A, there's a big need and a big gap. Yes. Excuse me. <coughs> So then you decide to come together and create uh, a support group, which is a, you know, doesn't really tell us what that means. So did, did you put together a vision statement or goals or where are you at in the process? I think we're just starting to grow to the point where we're look, headed in that direction. Okay. Um, the first couple meetings, it was simply the kids ran around and played and got to know each other, <coughs> and the parents just unloaded, yeah. I think, everything that's going on and seek, seeking advice from each other, and we just kind of hung out and talked while the kids played. Yeah. Um, as we went a little bit further down the road, then it became how can we help these kids to be socialized? Sure. How can we bring them into the community and make them part of the community? And that's when kind of the field trips and the art and craft projects started. Um, and then now we're growing even into a whole new realm, I think. A place you really couldn't have anticipated. Yes. I, I'm just gonna mention that uh, something I just saw the other day on Facebook was that your entire group had gone tubing at Mont du Lac which is a tubing in Ski Hill, um, what is it, just south of Duluth, mm -hmm. around the Fond du Lac yeah. area? Superior, I think it's located. 
Yeah, so I thought that was fantastic. And that was really a great piece also, I think, for the community to see. I mean, it's much a much cooler and exciting environment than this old blackboard. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, that shows me that you guys are getting things done, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so as how often are you meeting? We meet every Monday at okay. 6 o'clock. Okay, and where are you meeting at? We meet at the First Assembly of God Church basement. It's the one right across from Dairy Queen. Okay, all right. And so cross cross-border contacts. Did you know each other before? We no, okay. no. So you, are, you came over from the Fort Francis community and you had a friend that connected you with this group. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And so your experience with this group, how, how has that, that experience been for you? Well, it's, well, just to start with, it's been wonderful overall. It's, 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 uh, it's something that we never had the opportunity to uh, to do before in terms of sharing with other families, uh, opportunities for um, both my children actually to mm -hmm. to engage with other children. Uh, my my oldest daughter has joined the group okay. uh, to sort of help help out with How with nice. mom while you know because really, you know, my really son's really a busy like boy and <laughs> so she'll kind of kind of help out in the group a little bit too. And she's really engaged with her brother, so it's okay. and she's always interested to come too. So it's been something that we've done together that way and. Um, I, I guess for me, there's a lot of things that have been a benefit of it, but uh, first of all, it's just coming together with other like families, right. families that know what you're going through, <coughs> Excuse me. and things like that. So it's uh, because we you have your people. Yeah, right? exactly. That, that have the same experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, lots of differences in in the way everybody does things, That's but right. you have this common piece. Yeah. Um, yeah. That you're learning about with yeah. each other. Yeah, so there's just been many benefits, but that's one of them is just coming together with people who know what you're going through and being able to share your experiences uh, with them and, and theirs with you, and we all have something new to offer each other. Well, and I think there's a lot of um, value in mentioning that there's two children in the room with us right now, and they are, they're doing two very different things. <coughs> Excuse me. But they're being who they are, in this space and I, I wonder and you know, I'm literally just thinking out loud here that when you are all together in a group you, there's more of an appreciation for the fact that this is how it is right these are you're not I mean and I you know you're not making excuses that maybe outward society might make you feel like you need to make sometimes one which of our big group rules <laughs> is we don't apologize when we're <laughs> in our space that's perfect. we don't apologize Good. because where your child might be having a meltdown today mm -hmm. to next week it might be someone else's child right. and we just go about and we do what we do and they do what they do and mm -hmm. it's okay inclusion and acceptance yes, yes. Mm -hmm. i really mm -hmm. really like that and i think that's kind of where i was trying to come from here um you know I, i've seen parents apologize and you know it's heartbreaking because as a as a parent, even if these are not the same challenges I have, I still consider all these kids somebody's baby, right? That needs more compassion and understanding than not. Exactly. You know. Um, Matthew is your son. Yes. And here next to you we have Alex. Alex is Jennifer's son. Alex, tell me how old you are. I'm 10 years old. Okay. And what grade are you in? Fourth grade. Can you tell me who your teacher is? Mr. Zika. Oh, Mr. Zika? Are you lucky or what? Mm -hmm. he, is a, he is a good man. Mm -hmm. I know that because his dad was my teacher <laughs> and coach for many years. Mm -hmm. So when you're in school, what's your favorite subject? Probably math. Because I just really get to use my head and it kind of is a form of art when I have to do the paper pencil algorithm. That is one of the most beautiful things I think I've ever heard. I always used to say that because I was artistic I couldn't do math and now you kind of blew that theory out of the water. That is a really beautiful sentiment. I think that you have a future in maybe engineering. <laughs> What do you want to be when you grow up? I think that I should be an architect because I'm really good with art and I can use my art skills to help 
give people homes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Choking on the cough drop. <laughs> you have a big heart. And you know what else? I think you have a big future. I think you're years ahead most kids your age. That's beautiful. Um, I really want to thank you for being here today because when someone tells you you're going to be interviewed by a crazy lady like me, <laughs> you don't know what to expect. So you, you've done fantastic. I'm sure mom's very proud. Oh, yes. And I, I bet you're pretty proud of your mom for getting this group together. Are you finding that you are making new friendships with kids that you hadn't met before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And is it fun? Tell me a little bit about it for you, what you think about this group. Well, it's great. I get to figure out who I am and I get to learn myself and others and it's another way to make friends and I get to have a lot of fun with them and I get to meet other people and it just makes me really happy to do that. Isn't your mom great for deciding that she should put this group together? Yeah. yeah. It sounds to me like it's working. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you, do you know about how, what the, how many parents and kids you have involved? We have, um, it ranges anywhere from like 8 to 12 kids at okay. this point, but every week we seem to see a new face or hear from a new person. Well, I hope that this program too maybe will open some, oh, some eyes. And uh, I know that you're really busy getting getting things done and organizing as a group on kind of the back end of it. Um, Sharon, I'm just going to bring you into the conversation. Sure. Um, you and I have some history together. Mm -hmm. Yes. And some future, yes. of course. Um, you as uh, grandma. Yes. So you are there other gra grandparents in this group too? There are other. Or maybe not yet? Yes. There are other grandparents, <coughs> uh, but uh, not raising their grandchildren. She, I think Gail raises it. So it's another girl yeah, who has attended for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, that's right. yeah. from your perspective, you know, you're also an RN. Yes. So you've got, you know, you've you've got a diverse background, really. And so, tell me a little bit about your experience with the group and and the value that you see in it. Um. Well, first of all, um, all of the families are coming together um, with their children, um, which is fabulous because the people that are, whether it's the parents or the grandparents, the caregivers, are, um, they need support yeah. and help so yeah. that they can be healthy and know what services are available so that they can support these, these kids. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I think that's fabulous because that's moving forward. Yes. Um, I love that um, someone much younger. <laughs> um, I love that you said that. <laughs> is, is taking this uh, this bull by the horns and yeah. saying, "Okay, yes. we're going to do something about it." Um, so I think that's fabulous, and um, I think I've probably been around a, enough, long enough that I've had the opportunity to um, see many children come together with different kinds of disabilities and it just works. Yeah. And so one of my favorite things is really to see um, all of the parents, um, whether they're grandmas or aunts sure. or, or moms and dads, um, really see that, that see that happen for the kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to, for Jen to have started this to you know, when, when you're raising kids with, with disabilities and with autism, there's a lot of, um, I guess, ugliness that can go with it. Mm -hmm. And to get us all in a room and talk about that stuff that is just normal for us, um, that's not normal for the other people, and to be able to laugh about it like oh, we yes. did last yeah. night, um, is, it's just, it, it there's an openness to the reality of it. <laughs> there really is. Yeah. There really is. Yeah. Because it's, cause it's yeah. heartbreaking at the same time. It is. Uh, it is. You know, we have, we, it's not the fairy tale that we thought might right. happen. Mm -hmm. And and not to, and I don't mean to be, you know, non-compassionate in right. making that statement. But the truth of the matter is, is you, 
you have to gain skills that you weren't sure that you didn't know you had to have. Right. Right. Yeah. right? Yeah. And I imagine that finding others who are managing, you know, those different skills as well. This worked for me. This worked. This really didn't. But to really sit down and have those conversations, very frank, very open. Again, accepting. Yes. And for the benefit of everybody, that's a powerful energy I, I would have to think to be involved with. Okay. Yeah. I think the other thing that's happening in our group is is that um, Jen is receiving um, so many offers mm -hmm. from people to do really kind, really nice things. Mm -hmm. And um, that that feels pretty good. You know, whether but people from the community are starting to reach out and for example we have a gentleman that just got a hold of us and said, I would like to come and teach sign language to your kids next oh. Monday. And I thought, yes. <laughs> yeah. and so they're getting opportunities wow. that they didn't have before to do fun and exciting things. Yeah. So. That literally gives me goosebumps. I mean, I don't, don't know if I'm supposed to be touchy-feely in this you know, <laughs> scenario, but this is meaningful. Yeah. And when something like this, when finally, finally there is a way to talk get your voice out to the larger community mm -hmm. and to have it coming back to you with compassion with offers to help and support mm -hmm. that you know here's these people with these talents too that maybe this is also a great opportunity for them to give a gift that they've got yes, yes. that's yeah. really an amazing circle and we have kids who constantly were saying well, we can't do this, or you know, or especially their siblings. We we're not going to do this because oh. your sibling is aut has autism. Mm -hmm. um, it's really cool to be able to say we're going to do this because you're in the autism group sure. and because you're autistic. We get to do this. Oh, yeah, I love that. It puts a different spin on it. Yeah. I think for them. And you That's do kind wonderful. of as a parent of a child with special needs get used to kind of being like team mummy, right? And then sure. and your and, and your 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 quest is to do everything that is for your <laughs> child and and set up the services and make sure that they're being successful and you're on right. all the time. And so have someone give back to you and say, you know, wow, Acknowledge can we support that. you and that this must be hard. Yeah. It it's you, even it gives you a breath. To say, wow. Uh, oh, I bet it oh, okay. Does. <laughs> I bet it and it's does. even hard to accept that in some ways because you, you sort of get used to being team mummy and or team daddy. That's a really you interesting know, just, way to look at Yeah, and, and uh, just, oh, okay, you can give it to me because you, you, you just take on that role and, and you, you just do mm -hmm. because that's what. You just got to keep moving on. That's, that's what yeah. you do. And there's, there's no going back. You just, whatever the supports are, you, you just <laughs> do those things, right? And, uh, so yeah, so it's nice to for actually have. Say, let us, let us do yeah, a little bit for yeah, you. Can, yeah. can we give to you? Can we yeah. offer you this? And and it's you know it's humbling, and but we're very gracious for things like we that too. We have good communities here, and when mm -hmm. I think when people, and I think it really helps too when people can know exactly who they're helping. You know, a lot of times there's really grand efforts, but we may not know that it's it's our neighbor. It's this person I have I see in the coffee shop every, you know, or at the restaurant, or you know, uh, it's our people. We are each other's people, and we can affect each other yeah. in a powerfully positive way. Last night we talked a lot about um, the social isolation mm -hmm. that um, not only the children have but the families. Mm -hmm. um, what is you know typical and normal or easier? for um, many other families just to pick up and go to the movie or go to the bowling alley or go to a basketball game sure. or go out to eat um, is is really, it, it's challenging. I mean, you know, it's we... It's not that simple. No, we worry about, well, first of all, many of us have to, you know, uh, battle the transition from the house to outside. We have to, you know, battle food preferences and and noise and there's and then there's that uh, for many the um, that dark cloud of is the is the child going to, is it going to be too much or you know are they going to be overstimulated or are, are we going to have a public down? meltdown right yeah. yes. public yeah. meltdown yeah. and so. Um, and then the children too. We talked about the social the social isolation for them as well. That mm -hmm. that they're not invited to birthday parties. Um, um, I know because of this group, 
that you know my little guy Carson was invited to um, the first his first birthday party ever, and that was Alex's birthday. Well, and I saw Alex carrying yeah. a happy birthday. I saw him carrying a gift for somebody's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so those are huge. Those are, huge. Really those are things you don't think about. Like, and they're not they're not insignificant. Uh, you know, that's neat. That's real stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like I wouldn't hesitate to go to the bowling alley with this group with Carson. Right. I wouldn't wouldn't hesitate. Wouldn't, and we would probably we probably laugh at a lot of things and <laughs> but to go maybe with Carson with a group of um, uh, families that maybe don't have the lives that we have sure. um, would be more difficult sure. yeah. um, and it's not it's just I, I imagine too there's a lot of you know for me not living the, the challenges that you live um, I want to understand it because I want to be someone in the community that gets it mm -hmm. and creates space for mm -hmm. everybody, right? Mm -hmm. But most of us don't have, we don't have that knowledge. We mm -hmm. maybe have that compassion, but don't know how to, what do we do with it? How do we, and how do we talk to our own kids about it? Mm -hmm. um, That's a great thing. We would love to see the schools teach or talk to the community about um, creating an inclusive or even to the classrooms too as well let's let's teach some Don't awareness that there are children with different needs and we're all different um, every one of mm -hmm. us has our own unique quirks mm -hmm. and um, to be able to teach a little bit of awareness and understanding could and compassion could go a long way for mm -hmm. not only the kids but the adults that are raising them sure um, what would that change the world in a couple mm -hmm. generations Yes. Yes. <laughs> there, um, because we should as, be treating each other that way, anyways. Right. But, um, because as adults, we have the ability to um, make a positive difference or not. Um, and admit when we know. don't know something, or admit when we're not comfortable, and mm -hmm. ask and, and ask questions that might make we might have to step a little outside of our comfort zone. Can well, I help? Can I? Do, you know, is it? Should I? Help you? Should I step away? Is I it? I love that you said that. Yeah. Sharon was just talking yeah. about that uh, yeah. the other day. Yep, yeah. last night we were talking. Yes. Just that, that just training and, and whether it's the the you know the clerk in the grocery store. You know, a lot of times you know a child's having a meltdown, and and people just um, you know all the you know the kids just a little brat, but they don't know yeah. that maybe. A gum packet was flipped the wrong way, and that's that was just the end for that child. And um, as our kids get bigger, um, it's not as easy just to pick them up and throw them more over a shoulder and leave. <coughs> and you don't want to so, leave them home. I mean, you, right? Because yeah. you want to expose them. You want to teach them yeah. while we can. And you're learning too. Yeah. I imagine. I mean, I can't. I really can't imagine the vigilance that there must be as a parent to to be aware of things that may be a trigger or cause discomfort. Well, even simple things like going to the grocery store and... I don't think and that's think, simple and, and, and and you know, <laughs> Not easy at any level, for sure. Right. Don't do it. Yeah. But this is going to be the kind of thing that you end up <laughs> pre-planning, right? You're like, okay, well, okay, what, are there two parents so one parent could take the, you sure, know, your yeah, child? Or, sure. okay, if we're going to go there, he needs to be holding a certain toy or, yeah. you know, we need the list so he has something to check off. Like, if there's... Yeah. The idea of can I pick up milk and bread just isn't a simple thing anymore, right? So it becomes something that you're so you're really, hyper aware of, and all those pieces of your life are you know you're it's, hyper aware it's of adventure. those pieces. Yes, and we would love yeah. as yeah. a group to kind of slowly make our way through the whole town. We would want to go and everybody go to the grocery store for something. Yeah, yeah. as a group, and we're here, and that uh, you know that yeah. kind of in your face lets people see that we are. Um, that this is going to happen, and, and at the yeah. same time, it's a teaching thing yeah. for other Let's people, too. Let's be a better too. community yeah. by, by asking questions, yeah. by by sharing environments, yeah. and being a little uncomfortable every now and then. It's, yeah. You know, sometimes it's just, I just want to help that mom. Yeah. You know, I don't know what to do. I, You know, and yeah. I think we get... It's that easy. Just to it is that easy. Yeah. What, you know, what can I do? If, is there anything I can do to help? What can I do? Yeah. Um, voice sometimes just even knowing that that there's somebody there that got your back is, especially sometimes if you have two kids you know and you've got oh, one yeah. that's not moving and one's going the other way it's like 
maybe go get that kid. <laughs> could, you, could you just hold on? The one with the blue hat, just make sure he doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But but I think one of the things that a lot of our kids on the autism spectrum have to work on is th their social skills and knowing the right thing to say in the right place at the right time in the right environment and those socially savvy skills are, are well, challenging for them. But even for adults, because I mean, <laughs> right? we're, right. we're yeah, they we're so fearful of uh, something misspoken or right. misinterpreted. Right. Right. But I but I really believe that people at heart are good. Oh, yeah. well, I just yes. do. Well, uh, I just do. And I think people are, do yeah. do want to give back and do so, do it so correctly, don't, don't right? Don't be afraid to yeah. to say, uh, can I, is there anything you need? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, it might it might be. What did you say? Flip that gum pack over. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Could you and just, can you imagine <laughs> how empowering a you know, stranger <laughs> might feel to say, yeah. flip the gum pack yeah, and everything is fine. Really <laughs> it's all yes. Yeah. So there's, so there's yeah. that other side of it too. You don't have to have a, a superhero cape yeah. on or special skills. It's compassion and kindness that we're showing each other, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe changing that experience. Um, and maybe the flipping won't work, <laughs> yeah. but um, just to know that someone is there. And yeah. that's the thing we don't always know what what it is, and we may not. If it, if my son's thing happened to be the gum packet, you know, sure. then he might not be able to tell you that the gum packet is right. the problem. If he right. so if that also, were his problem, you're then also like mystery, mystery. Just knowing that there could be a mysterious the reason yeah, that's only in, in their time. mind, and and then just to, that compassion to know that there's something that's hard for them, and it could be it's not because they're being bad or misbehaving. Right. It's because there's something in their sensory world, sure. or there is something that is that affects them differently than affecting the rest them of us, exactly. And they feel very strongly yeah. about it. Very right. much so. I mean, you don't have to understand all the background, but just exactly. know that this is a tough moment for this child. Yeah. You don't even for sure know why. Exactly. Well, his parents don't you, even always know and why, you can't right? Say and stop because no. that's not the answer. This is the moment. We're writing it out, and we're going to move yeah. on to what's that's next. Right. That's and right. And that's something I learned in the group. Um, mm -hmm. I had like a high, I guess, embarrassment factor at first. And, and fear of going places because of the, you're not sure if we're going to have a meltdown. Um, we're not sure what the reaction is going to be because we can't control <laughs> town. You, you don't can't know what you're going to walk into. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and another parent from the group who's not here today, but uh, she says, just relax and let it go. If they're going to have a meltdown, you stand there, you don't remove them from the store, you let them have their meltdown, and it is what it is. Yeah. And I think that that kind of helped me to feel like it's okay to just let them have their moments. It's and their process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, to, and to try to stop it makes it worse, to help them just kind of get what they yeah, need to... Yeah. to a situation yeah. that... I fully believe that more adults had temper tantrums every now and then or had, had their meltdowns <laughs> and people didn't try to talk them down out of it. <laughs> I mean, I told I said that to a doctor many years ago. Why don't, why don't we do that? Why don't we just have our moments? Have our emotion or whatever that is, ride it out. Make sure nobody, <laughs> yeah. nobody has a camera or, right? <laughs> but, but, but we all know how when, we, when, when we're in a moment that we really can't control our emotion, but cognitively we might understand that there's other choices to make, but we're feeling that, whatever that is. The last thing that makes us feel good is someone saying, oh, just think something else. Or, you know, look over there. It doesn't work, yeah. right? Yeah. We have to work through what we're, what we're going through. Alex to just has a that same space. Alex needs a quiet space for a little while to kind of work through everything, and then, and then you're good to go, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Is there um, anything in particular that you really? And it's really this is more of a conversation, right? But but also getting information out to the community. Is there anything in particular that you would like to share, you know, with the community? And you know. Uh, I know you have some stuff that you brought with I'm, you. I just jotted down a few things because I think, you know, that I'm going to forget something that I really want to share. Yes. Um, I guess one of the, and I'll just maybe just mention a few of the things so I don't forget. Um, and the thing I didn't want to forget about talking about was the word competence. Uh, that I, I, I want to talk about how competent these children really are. And, yeah. and for me, one of the key things this group has done is actually helped reveal competence in competence, our kids. That they, uh, they have abilities. They have abilities. They have amazing abilities. Yeah. These are gregarious, interesting, bright, fun-loving, wonderful children with intelligence and so many skills to share and offer. And often those, that competence really is just not revealed. 
because of some of their sensory sensitivities, sure. because of their social skill challenges and, and different things that really can just hold them back from the world being able to see how wonderful and competent they really are. So, um, so being able to be around peers that uh, understand them and, and don't worry about the fact that the thing they said was you know, something they weren't interested in, or the fact that they didn't greet with a proper eye contact, like all those little socially savvy sure. skills that sometimes kids can miss. Sure. But this is a safe place for them, and, and they look very competent around each other. It's so interesting to see that. That's one of the things that, yeah, like, that we were talking about the Alex other day, just like, these kids, you wouldn't know the children on the spectrum from the children who are on yeah. the spectrum some days. Like, Alex was um, having a rough night at group one day, and he went and got a hamper, right? and crawled under the hamper and covered himself up and the kids kept playing. Um, there was no, yeah. oh my goodness, is there's a child this? under yeah. a hamper. Right. Um, and then when he felt better, he came out and rejoined the kids and nobody said a word, did they? Yeah. No, well, you just joined your friends again and it. I think what you're saying too is what Alex really had said earlier that he's getting to know himself. Yeah. And who he is. That's right. And really the best way for a child to get to know who they are is to have it be an environment where everybody is okay with who that is. That's right. And they're curious too. Yeah. I imagine you're learning about your children. Yeah. As well. Yeah. And we're sort of used to, I think, our kids looking different in these environments, right? And I've often thought, what even at family gatherings, mm -hmm. Matthew will look different um, because he's the one playing in the corner where all the other kids are running around talking to each other and, sure. and doing their, their games and stuff together, right? Because he just does his thing in his way and he, that's easy for him. And then Which there'll is be weird. a. Yeah. No, <laughs> and then he, he does his thing, right? Yeah. But, but you get him in a group in a, where they're doing skills that he can do, like let's play tag together okay. or let's run and all of a sudden he's running and he's laughing and he's, he's looking and they're going up and down the hill and up and down and hide and seeking and mm -hmm. come on let's go and all of a sudden there's it, this sharing and, and he, he looks like everyone to else. enter into that. Exactly okay. and I find that he does more of that in this group and there'll be moments where someone like Alex will pull, pull him out and say hey Matthew let's play or hi Matthew and and just encourage him to respond to sure, that right sure. and that makes him look more competent and now very, he's not the kid in the he's corner approachable anymore. In, yeah. he's more approachable and more comfortable yeah. I, ha I wish I really wish I had a camera person here rather than the way we have it set up right now because <laughs> Matthew has created his own little <laughs> environment <Yeah>. that's right <laughs> which is what he's, Matthew's do he's done yeah. he's, he's got it yeah and you know what else I think haven't you ever been in a room where you just wanted to make yourself your little getaway? Yeah. Yes. yeah that's <laughs> What's holding us back? We have a lot to learn from these children. <laughs> and he'll do that. He'll create his own thing in the living room, the breakfast table, wherever he might be. You know? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the group gives him a chance and all the other kids just, they, they look so confident with each other. It's and It's shocking it's just, it's to so me. I think I, I'm shocked week after week yeah. to see children that when you see them at school, don't acknowledge virtually any child around them. Um, they're kind of in their own little world. Sure. Um, then you get them into the group and suddenly they're running and playing together and interacting with each other. Yeah. Um, like so is there an awareness with the kids too? Or is it just a sort of an energy they, they, they bring to each other's space? Uh, you know, uh, it seems and, to be and, more and of this. Maybe that's a big question. Yeah, I had a, a few question. moms say to me after group, um, you know, that I didn't tell my child that we were that the other kids there were autistic, mm -hmm. and when they left, their son said, um, "Mom, I think that child has a special mind just like mine, a special brain just like mine." Uh, it's crazy to watch it yeah. work yeah. and kind of yeah. because it does does um, kind of evolve. It does. But yeah, it, it's uh, it's and and I think about the the parents that have brought kids that have said, um, you know, they won't come or they, they're not gonna play or, you know, they'll never do anything. The expectations and are really low for... Yeah, we just sit there and it's like, and usually the parent at the first meeting is like, I can't believe this is happening. Yeah. Wow. And um, so... So it is like it, more it the second one, just more of an energy like that, that they feed they off each other. And, click, yeah. they click. But it's not just, like, this is one of the points I want to make, is that it's not just autistic kids playing with autistic right. kids. Yeah. Alex has a neurotypical friend whose mother is familiar that um, Alex is autistic. Mm -hmm. And she has taught her son uh, patience and compassion and understanding. And Alex, even though, you know, they look at the world a little differently, 
um, has become really good friends with him. Yeah. And right. the two of them click. So I think it's about yeah. as parents educating their children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. to have a little compassion and a, a little understanding and to, to not be afraid to ask questions. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then it's, then this little environment that we've created in the church basement is something that we could create in an entire school. Exactly. It, 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 you're inviting people in mm -hmm. and both sides are really need to be open to a large learning curve, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, my wheels are turning. I like that. Yeah. So you had asked about. Um, <coughs> I think your question was, you know, kind of what. What was our comment, or what would we like the community to know? Mm -hmm. um, I know something that's important for me is, to. Uh, I guess to for people to know, um, and let's do something about all the barriers that face families. Okay. Um, child care. You know, we talked a little bit about this last night. Oh. The child, you know, child care. I mean, we have, we have, um, I know of people that, you know, ha had jobs or have jobs and have had to leave them because they are not able to find um, child care, daycare um, for our kids. Um, advocacy. Uh, you know, trying to advocate, uh, whether it's navigating, um, you know, the social services, whether it's advocating for a child in school, you know, an IEP, the assessment, um, you know, that whole um, piece as well is, is a huge um, a battle and barrier for our, our families as well. So I would imagine that is a part to full-time job. It is a full-time job. Yeah. And put those pieces together. I had no idea what an IEP even was before I started the group. I knew we should have one for Alex. Is that an independent education plan? It yes. is. Okay. Um, but it was through like Sharon and Jess and the other people that have um, IEPs that I learned what kind of things, I, what questions I need to ask, what yes. things. Well, these are the things know. we can kind of offer each other, right? Those yes. Really, it sounds to me like you really need to identify your own child yes. and advocate for yourself because there aren't people coming to you saying no you need to do this. To so no. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. Well, or yeah, I, that's part of it. Okay. That's part of it. I think this group is, yeah, we're all together now. And so, you know, when Jen started, you know, to talk about her um, trying to navigate the IEP system, you know, we've, the Kashuk family has been in that system right. for 30 years. And many of us have had IEPs and navigated right. that system right. and okay. know the ah, suggestions so and things yeah. to, you know, it's to help, but it's, yeah. it's the, what I worry about a lot is, is the, the families out there that don't know what they don't know. Right. And they just, they accept it. And, and again, all, I mean, you, you think of all of this doctor's appointments and getting a diagnosis and, you know, some families are really, they're full of grief and they're overwhelmed. And then, so then you throw in, you know, possible psychiatrists for medications and, and um, having to give up a job because you don't have daycare. And, and then what um, do you do? And because this isn't, an, this isn't an inexpensive no. thing to navigate either. No. Right. Yeah. No. And, no. And, you're, and as an adult, you are trying to manage your own emotions. I mean, you, you're hitting the grief cycle. Yeah. That's right. Grief and loss. And, <clears throat> and so then to try to manage that, plus um, trying to fight for a kid to get, you know, services where, wherever it is, um, just, it's well, lost. And, and I also wonder, too, um, that sometimes these kids can't really articulate to you what their experience is on on their side of things right. and are you sometimes finding out things you know through a different through, later, different, right? through different people we know through sure. different uh, yeah. children will come and tell me how his day went or if something went sure. good or bad um, right. and, and oftentimes they, they lack, they they might lack communication skills right they might yeah, not be able to articulate what yeah, you have to have what, what happened in their day or 
Oh, and what's going on you're have people me. telling you yeah. what's going on. Yeah, if um, you're blessed, you get a good teacher that has good communication with you. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And our schools need support too. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. they do. And and the teachers will tell you that they need and space. They do. They need support. You know, I think my experience there too is there. There's not a lack of compassion. Correct. There is. Um, it's a resources yes. piece. Yeah. Like it's a resources piece, mm -hmm. and. Um, Across the board, yes. Yeah. Across the board, yeah. These are good people too. Yes, yeah. That, um, and I agree with that. I think most people, you know, when you know better, you do better. Most people, yes. they want to do well, and they want to engage, and they don't have the time or resources or knowledge to be able to do that well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just think about like it's an experience we had this year, for example, that Matthew was in his first Christmas concert. Really, okay. he's in grade three, uh, and you know, but he was not really able to be competent in a. In a a concert and he would not be on the stage, okay. he wouldn't participate, he doesn't like singing songs and so none of what a typical class does was okay. something he was able to be part of. But this year his teacher had the education and knowledge to, to kind of scaffold or support how he could okay. reveal his competence and going back to that, you know, yeah. just how he could. Uh, so she had him hold up a sign and they did a play and he, he got to be the, one of the judges in a competition and he held up a sign and, and uh, set out what the score was and, and so, his EA actually sat with him and participated in that. Like there was just, there was a whole rollout effect. They made yes. it work and boy, he looked competent. He was, value, you just had to come about you know, it in a different Exactly, so position. he was not, you know, if you were gonna have a song, he didn't do that part, yeah. you know, so he doesn't always fit the mold of what your but average if, child if would, but if someone has the time and the resources yeah. and some of the knowledge, they might but they look, can look find at the difference way. that made. Right? Yeah. He was the principal of the school in the play, yeah. with, you know, and pulling up, and he just looked amazing up there. And like, Those what a proud mama moments. moment, right? Yeah. Like, you know, that's that's where you get the tear in your eye, and you yeah. think, that's my kid on stage in grade three, right? It's, but it, I think it and came the, about because this teacher right had the, the, right the knowledge place. and how to how to do that, how to yeah. structure it for him that he could show his competence, and it was great up there. So it's. It's those kind of moments that knowledge breeds, right? And, that's, and those become big moments. It was huge. Because I, I, then, next year, you can't tell me that this isn't going to work. That's right. Every other right. year, you're just like, oh, can't be in the concert. You know, and, 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 right. and the thing is, now the conversation has started about how can we make it work. That's right. So mm -hmm. It worked this way a, last year. Yeah. You know, this is how he was supported. You know, well. And maybe yeah. a, a different student, even, yeah. at, at some point. Yeah. And we say, there's a way. Yeah. You know, really, it's about getting creative. Yeah. And, and um, yeah. Uh, that's really, I'm glad you shared that story and I hope yeah. the teacher that, that made that happen. Yeah. Um, Mrs. It, Botsford is amazing. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's in uh, J. W. Walker. Yeah, yeah. 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 She's been wonderful. I know her, yeah. So that's, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's and he's had good teachers with good intentions as well. You know, it's yes. just I, that was just a moment this year where I thought I actually I think when I first realized it was happening, even I think I pulled over my vehicle and I had a little like clumped moment. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was like, and I just yeah. thought, why, why, and I thought, this is silly, why are you feeling this way? And I'm like, someone's trying to get my kid. And it's that, yeah. right. those moments that we, we have, you know. Not give up until he's you know, part, part of that. So, that yeah. making those efforts to make him part of that class community. Yeah. And that he is a member of that classroom. Like, so if, we, if this group uh, assists things more people to, right? to for the, they can realize that things are possible, down, right? Uh, yeah. Feeling valued. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. It, it comes down to feeling valued. Yeah. And, and knowing that there's an effort made. Yeah. Yes. Ultimately, it's, that might not have worked in the time frame yeah. or whatever, yeah. but it did. Well, you, that's ex you hit yeah. the nail on the head with that, actually. That, that, that moment I had where I, I, I felt that a little bit of emotion, it was, it was before the concert mm -hmm. took place. So it was like, wow, they're trying and they're caring enough to involve my child in his classroom community. You know, even if it had, to get him there. yeah, even if it had crashed and burned and he'd run off the stage, they were trying. Yeah. And someone caring about my child that much was yeah, so meaningful true. to me. Yeah. So that's, that's what so I like champions. to see. Right. Yeah. To those are superheroes. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It was completely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so that, yeah. that and has impact. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a moment that you'll remember for your whole life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't think she would have realized that. Right. So it's. And as other people, you know, come and offer us all these great opportunities, they become our superheroes. And we in turn want to turn around and give back and show that that our kids are superheroes too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they have There's the no ability question. to be superheroes to other people. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. just great. I, I, um, this is the kind of um, 
you know, we have, there's so many stories in our community, in your community, in the region that, that I think are great to tell. And we're still talking about struggle here, right? But there's movement in all the right directions. And this is just the beginning for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, don't be surprised if you know, people continue to reach out to you both generously and asking for help. How, are you, how would you do this? How would you get this to happen? Um, that's going to continue to happen. And I think it's just kind of happening organically it really to is. me, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. I, we're not doing anything to to make it grow, it's growing on its own. That's and right. I just think it's because the kids are so amazing and we're blessed with really good people in our group. Yeah. Um, and the need yes. has been there for a while and I think it's, like you said, to someone like Jen saying, hey, this needs to happen, let's do it. And getting a place in the space and you know suggesting it and putting it out there and, and then together. you know if you build it it will come yeah, <laughs> you know it's like so there's because that's why there's power in numbers and, and maybe power is not the word but there's opportunity when you come mm -hmm. together exactly. um, and that can be very empowering maybe that's yes. a better term for it uh, this is going to change things for our communities we're hoping isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's that's a really beautiful thing, and I'm so grateful to you guys for making time for me today. Um, I know I've kept you here for quite a while. My cough has subsided. <laughs> <laughs> Super um, <laughs> I'm gonna bring Matthew over for uh, yeah. some. Uh, yeah, to absolutely. talk to them yeah. if you like. Yeah, just so you can, yeah let's introduce them. We want to do this for the, yeah. you know, this is for the kids and yeah. about our kids. Yeah. Yes, so, Lindsay, yeah. absolutely. I'll bring him in, like, if I've given him a few questions yeah. that you can ask him because I, I absolutely uh, he needs Now, you may I ask um, questions? Hi, my name is Hero. Yes, you are. <laughs> hey, Matthew. She's yes. going to ask you some questions? Okay, buddy. Sorry. Let's go ahead. It's good. <laughs> my name is Hero Mata. Um, is this, that's all right. How about if I hold it just because I'm afraid that it's going to turn that's off? Right. Okay. And then when we're done, maybe you'll help me put it away. Okay. Um, okay. Hi. Matthew. My name is Hero. Is that a favorite movie of yours? Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. movie is it? Is that Big Hero 6? Uh, Big Hero 6? I haven't seen it. Ladies and gentlemen, know how much I appreciate you guys being here today. Thank you so much for helping us spread awareness and get the word out. Well, it happened really quickly, and um, I'm glad that it did because I really, um, I'm excited for you guys. I, I hope that you'll get more, that more awareness will come. I hope that people continue to reach out to you, uh, invite not not only just to offer you things, but to invite you into um, more activities and. You know, let's let's be good to each other. Watch for it, us because we're going to be out there. We're going to be um, helping the community as well. And we have adults too with autism. Oh going. yeah. Oh really? Good. Yeah. And, Which know, is really nice for, for us to for see that because up. then we can see. You know, we can hear from them what it was like yeah, to sure. grow up and how they manage and how they navigate it yeah. and how yeah. and how um, things are for them. I'm yeah. so glad that you mentioned that before we were finished, Sharon. Yeah. It's not just kids. It's a couple more of those. Yeah. 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 See, one of the things I actually wanted to sh share as well, that this has just been really a nice opportunity for us because there aren't a lot of opportunities for children on the autism spectrum in oh. communities to participate. And so, like I said earlier, you know, it can be really isolating and they, they're not a good fit for things like the hockey team or the sure. baseball team or, or you know, because they might not listen to instructions well or there's they might be really over sensory stimulated, right? There's there's certain things that need to be in place for team sports to work well or certain group activities to work well yeah. that for some reason uh, they don't fit with those sometimes. And something like this, you know, for my son, for example, it's just been an opportunity for him to participate with other kids of the same age, yes. do social things. like. It's not even just also about the sport, but just the participation right. with with peers Whatever and being able to be. yeah socialize with each other. And so it's it's given him an opportunity to do some things like that that he might not otherwise be uh, possible yeah. to participate in. So it's uh, opening we, doors. Yeah, it's oh, opening okay. doors, and uh, we really appreciate that opportunity that that wasn't there before. And the group is for everyone from International Falls, from Fort Francis, from Little Fork, from. Mm -hmm. If you want to drive it, we're there. Yep. Um, yep. So we want to encourage if, 
if you, even if you think this is for you, come to a meeting. Yeah. Um, well, and I think the other thing too is you continue to have people from other communities become part of this. There's opportunities to go into that community yes. and experience. And one of the things we do, we get so stuck in our own little sphere. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we'd love uh, to have people come to Port so Francis and you know, is this region so really that yeah. um, there's lots yeah. of opportunities. Exactly. Um, yeah. And I really think that it's wonderful that you are looking for ways to give back to the community because that. That is something that it doesn't require special skills to do, right? And it gives them it, a sense of, you know, it gives our kids a sense of pride. Too, absolutely. That they are valuable members of this community and they can make a difference. Yep. yep. Right. <laughs> That's right. There's no doubt in my mind. No doubt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, again, I just want to give you my sincere heartfelt thanks for making this happen. And um, I'm really looking forward to sharing this with the community. Um, I'll, I'll get some contact information, so we'll make sure that we have that. And uh, I'll share it with you via Facebook and whatnot. And this is something that you can share however you feel um, can benefit the group and the community. Okay. All right? Okay. So thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for having us here. Oh, <laughs> you are so very welcome, Alex. What a good mannered little monkey you are. <laughs> you are just special. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.